Hello there, welcome to Proper DIY. If you're like me and you've got some pretty heavyweight kit kicking around the workshop that puts you off moving it, you need to keep watching because today I'm going to show you how to so you can move them about easily whenever you want. Now roll the intro. When we build things in the workshop, any time you start connecting lots of bits of timber together, the weight of the piece grows surprisingly quickly. And that's exactly the problem I've got with this new workbench, which I showed you how to build last week. Link above and in the description below if you haven't already seen it. Now that's not a problem if you never move your workbench around, but I want the flexibility of being able to move this occasionally without causing myself a hernia. So I've gone and bought some heavy duty casters from the internet. These are heavy duty, but they're only about 100 mil high. They're not that big. And what I'm thinking at the moment is fixing them in this sort of alcove that I've got at each end of the workbench. I've got a four inch deep alcove that I can put something in that's not gonna get in the way. The last thing I really want is these on the outside so I can trip over them. So what I'm thinking at the moment is some simple sort of lever action in here that I can use with my foot only. I don't want anything complicated. So I can just move this 10, 15 mil off the ground and move this around without breaking into a sweat. So I've been looking at how to make these casters go up and down. And I think I've settled on the basic principle. What I'm gonna do is, if you can imagine this is the leg of the workbench, I'm gonna fix the casters to a bit of four by two that's actually hinged. So when the workbench is sitting on the ground normally, the caster is just resting in place. As soon as I push down on the caster, then the workbench raises by maybe 15 or 20 millimeters, allowing it to roll around. So I think this is the, the main principle I'm going for. It's really, really simple and there's not that much really to go wrong. And then I thought, well, if I have the same on the other side with a lever arm, then as the lever arm pushes down and pushes down this caster, maybe I can get this one to push down as well and I end up with a situation where I've got everything moving down at the same time. And really the system I want is just to push down once with my foot and then lock it in place and then the, the opposite to disengage it. So that's really, I don't want to be messing around with bungees or latches or on my hands and knees. I just want it very, very simple. So a couple of things I've realized about this. Firstly, if this is longer, then rather than me just pushing down here, it can be pushing down over here, which might make things easier because I've got a longer lever as well. Secondly, this hinge I've not orientated in the normal way. These hinges I've got from Screwfix are less than £1.40 a pair, so not expensive hinges by any means. And first of all, I was looking to fix a hinge in the traditional way, like this, which would open up as and when required. But that means that when all the weight is on the caster, actually the pin in the hinge, which is probably one of its weak points, is taking all the load. I don't really want that. However, I realise there's another way of fixing these hinges, and it's like this. And what this creates is that there's a shelf here that the load of the leg is actually in shear against these, this part of the hinge, rather than the pin. So even if I didn't have half the hinge, it creates a really nice shelf for that load to go through the hinge and then into the screws in shear. So this is the way I'm gonna connect the thing together because I think it's gonna be a lot more durable and it's gonna take all that load off of that pin. So essentially, that's the setup. What I haven't decided yet is how I'm gonna latch this lever arm in position. As I said, I just wanna do it with my foot. And what I'm gonna do is build this first and see how hard it is to push down and I've got a couple of ideas, but I really want to see how it works first. So I think it's time that we start cutting some timber and fixing these hinges. I'm yours until the end of time.
The timber I'm using here is C16 CLS 89 by 38 millimeters, which is slightly smaller than the 4x2 planed all round I constructed the workbench from, which helps fit the mechanism into the space at the end of the bench. Say my name until the city burns and the stars fade away and your scars don't hurt. Stay with me until the last man falls. I don't need them anyway when I'm with you, I have it all. Oh, oh, oh I'll never let you slip away. Oh, 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 and you don't have to be afraid. I will hold you till the sun comes crashing down. I'm yours until the end. I've cut the timber to length and I've glued and screwed this block to the main lever arm and it's essentially going to work like this, that as I push down on this lever with my foot, both casters get forced down and it ends up in the down position like this with a caster at each end, both level. And this whole arrangement's going to go in this alcove as I said earlier. So I've measured the caster quite accurately and it's 105 millimetres from top to bottom. So what I've decided to do is to set this surface 90 millimetres from the bottom. That means that when the caster is in the down position, this leg should be 15 millimetres off the floor so I can move it around. Now, in my younger days, the way I would have marked that is to get on my hands and knees with my face on the floor, marked 90 millimetres from each corner and then put a square. I'm getting too old for that now. So what I've done is just cut a 90 millimeter block and I'm just gonna put that underneath each timber as I connect it with the hinge to the leg. And that means at least each one is gonna be exactly the same height off the ground. I always find making little jigs and spaces like this not only saves time, but improves accuracy as well. On all these holes, I'm using a self-centering hinge drill bit. These drill bits aren't expensive. I've got a pack of three different sizes that's done everything that I've wanted it to, and are really useful for drilling accurate centered holes for hinges. Link in the description below. I'm lining up the levers with the front edge of the bench legs, which gives me a few millimetres clearance from the ply at the back, while still keeping the mechanism out of the way and in this little alcove thing at the end. You can see here while I'm trying the mechanism that the bottom left lever is snagging slightly, so I zipped off five millimetres once I took it apart, which solved the problem. It's absolutely essential that you use hinges with removable pins on a project like this for assembly and disassembly. The pack of four casters I bought came with two with lock-in mechanisms, which I don't really need, but I do need to make sure that I fix them far enough away from the leg so they can swivel 360 degrees without snagging on it. These are really easy to fit and it doesn't take long before I'm ready for my first test drive. As well as the self weight of the bench, I have on purpose fully loaded the tool store underneath. So I'm near enough at maximum load. The last thing I want is to have to clear out the tool store underneath the bench every time I move it because the mechanism can't cope with the weight. So really happy the way that's working so far. What I'm surprised about is how little force I have to put on the end of this lever arm to get this end of the workbench up and in the air. I could have calculated it, I didn't bother, but I just assumed that it'd be maybe two or three times more than I'm applying at the moment, which is good news. The other thing that's interesting is once it is in position, it's right down, how little force I need just to keep it in that position. It's only a kilogram or so. And that influences how I'm looking at clipping that in place. And I think I can do it just by using like a right angle bracket 
like this. And this is a sort of bracket that's left over after you've constructed a load of IKEA furniture and you just keep in your stocks for some time. I've had this for an awful long time. I'm looking to mount it on the top there and maybe do some sort of arrangement as it goes down, clips in and holds it in place. It's always handy to keep hold of these things because you never know when they're going to come in useful. I've had this a long time. In fact, it's probably not IKEA. It's probably more like MFI. If you haven't been collecting brackets like me for the last 20 years, these type are really easy to find in DIY shops and they come in lots of different shapes and sizes. I wanted a secondary fixing in the side of this bracket, so I just drilled an additional hole, which is easily done with an HSS drill bit. I also widened the bottom of the slot with a step drill, so the head of the screw that I'm going to use as a latch easily fits through it. I decided to take a little piece of material away from where the lever touches the hinge so it can fully lower and did this on my sander but a chisel would have been just as easy. While the sander was up and running I put a simple bevel on each edge of the arms just to tidy up the cut ends. I'm taking advantage here of a bit of sideways play from the hinge to be able to latch the bracket onto the screw head. Once I had the system up and running it took no more than 10 minutes to cut a new set of lever arms for the other end of the bench and fix the hinges as this is a really simple mechanism with only two moving parts. So I can finally move this around the workshop. All I need now is a nice smooth floor, but that's a video for another time. I hope you've enjoyed this one. If you have, please check out the other ones on my channel and please, please subscribe. There's so much more coming up. So from a workshop that's now got a workbench I can move around, I'll see you next time. <laughs>